Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are clothed in mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the beginning you created us in your image and placed us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you washed us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy all who thirst and give us the, the one life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. Loving God, like Jacob who dreamed of your promises, you have filled us with dreams too. Show us your promises in our dreams and give us ability to follow our dreams. Amen. And let us come to the Lord of mercy with our sins. And let us confess our sin in the presence of God, one another. To you, O God, our hearts are open to you, O Lord. We come to you, confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness, in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And so God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created us. Male and female, he created us. And God blessed us. And God saw that everything that he had made, and indeed, 
it is very good. And by the water and Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. God forgives you all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. John chapter 1, 50 through 51. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Here ends the reading. We continue our journey in the book of Genesis. If you remember, Isaac was Abraham and Sarah's son, who had been called upon as a sacrifice, but saved by God. Now Isaac, older, has two sons of his own, his firstborn son Esau and his younger brother Jacob. Now, in tradition of its time, Esau as the firstborn would see, receive a blessing from his father and receive the lion's share of inheritance. Esau was, if you recall, had very hairy arms. Isaac had gotten old and his eyesight was poor, but he could reach out and touch the arms of his sons and know who it was that was there. Jacob decides that he wants what is his brother's. So while Esau is off away from the home, Jacob and his wife plot. They wrap his arms with the lamb's wool. So he goes into his aged old father who can't see. And Dad reaches and touches the arms and says, Ah, Esau, my son, it's good you're here. And he blesses him to receive his inheritance. The brothers are all upset and fighting over this, and they split angrily. Time's gone by for a while, both brothers struggling with this. Now Jacob, he's off and trying to figure out what's going to happen. He's stolen his the blessing, a gift from Dad, but wasn't his, but his brother's. Now he's off near Haran. He's out in a field and it gets to be nighttime and he's all by himself. In fact, he, in fact, he's using a rock as a pillow. And he lays down and goes to sleep. And he has a vision while sleeping. And the heavens open up and he sees a ladder coming down. And he sees angels of the Lord climbing and coming down, ascending and descending. And he looks up and at the top of the ladder, he sees the Lord God himself, who calls to him, to Jacob, and saying to him that indeed you will receive a blessing from me. And look at the dirt around you as the dust spreads out. So too will your descendants spread out about you. Jacob awoke from his sleep and thought, surely the Lord is in this place. And I wasn't aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Amen. Whiskers? Yeah. Uh, uh, spaghetti head. Uh, what do you want? Oh, I was just... Oh, what was that? You have... That's a nice sticker there. It's a smiley face. He's got little googly eyes. Oh, where'd you get it? Uh, 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 this guy was uh, just giving him out. You know, the people who came by. Oh, where is he? Where is he? Uh, he's, he's gone now. Oh, I would like one like that. What'd you do to earn it? Uh, well, uh, 
I didn't do anything to earn it. <gasps> How could you get a nice smiley like that and not do something? But you just, man, you just gave it to me. Um, because, you know, to share. Oh my goodness. Like, um, oh, isn't it kind of like when Jacob, in, 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 when he sees God and God says, I'm going to bless you. Not because you've done anything to deserve a blessing, but, you know, because I'm God and I, I want to share my blessings. Yeah, kind of just like that. Um, though there is one other thing. What's that? Uh, I did get two stickers. <gasps> two stickers? Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to share. So, uh, <clears throat> uh spring ahead. <gasps> yes, me, your whiskers. You can have one. Oh, thank you. Really? I've got my own. Uh, spaghetti head. Here's Mr. Whiskers. Uh, yeah, you can wear it like that. Oh, thank you. Oh, maybe we should have the gift stickers to the kids. Yeah, we'll or, or give some. You can have some, and you two can share. But first, should we have a prayer? Uh, yes, spaghetti head. Okay, it's our heads. Dear God, Thank you for loving us and blessing us and sharing with us, even when we don't deserve it. And help us to share your love with people around us, whether they deserve it or not. Amen. Nice prayer. Oh, take my, my, uh, my smiley face. Uh, yes, we get ahead. Um, it really would be a good gift. Go wherever, wherever, wherever we want to. Hmm. Bye. Pennant race is starting to heat up. Baseball's on people's minds. Batters hustling to the plate for their turn at bat. Questionable calls going uncontested. Umpires being thanked after the game. Fans returning foul balls. Baseball? Well, it was for a few weeks during the spring of 95. Professional baseball was a different game. The players were on strike demanding more money. Million di dollar arms were at home. Cadillac bats were in the rack. The contracted players said they wanted more money. Owners determined to push forward and have a season threw open the gates to almost anybody who knew how to scoop up a grounder or field a bunt. These weren't minor leaguers. Minor leaguers were on strike as well. These were people who had coached Little League or had played baseball in high school or just walked off playing their college season. And all of a sudden, there they were in Yankee pinstripes. Games weren't fancy, mind you. Line drives rarely reached the outfield. One manager commented about his pitchers, saying that they threw the ball so slow that the radar gun couldn't even pick them up. You could shell a half dozen peanuts by the time it took a relay to get from the outfield all the way to home plate. The players huffed and puffed more than the big bad wolf. But did they have fun? The diamond was studded with guys who played the game for the love of the game. When the coach said run, they ran. When the coach said, I need volunteers to, to shag fly balls, every hand went up. They arrived at the ballpark early. They thanked the, uh, the attendants who washed their uniforms. They thanked the caterers who provided the food. They thanked the fans who paid a dollar to come out and watch them. They were just excited to be there, to be a part of it. In fact, it was said that there were more players lined up to sign autographs than there were fans seeking autographs. These guys didn't see themselves as a blessing to baseball, but rather that baseball was a blessing to them. They didn't expect luxury. They were stunned and surprised by it. They didn't demand more playing time. 
They were thrilled just to have any. For them, it was baseball again. Oh, it wasn't classy. It wasn't what you really expected in the majors. You missed the three-run home runs, the frozen rope pickoffs, but that was forgiven for the pure joy of seeing some guys who played for the joy of playing. What made it so special? Simple. They were living out a life they did not deserve. These guys didn't make it to the big leagues on their skills. They made it because of luck. They weren't picked because they were good. They were picked because they were willing. And here we are with Jacob. Jacob, vision of heaven opening up and the Lord God speaking to him. I will bless you, Jacob. What have I done? What have I done? I've lied. I've stolen. I deceived my blind, aged father, tricking him into believing that, you know, I'm Esau. I stole Esau's birthright. I stole his home from him. I've caused great division. And you're going to bless me? What have I done to earn this blessing? Nothing, Jacob. In fact, the Bible is filled with so many who wonder, why would you bless me? I'm sinful. I'm imperfect. Look at all the mistakes and all the things I have done wrong. Why me? Because you're willing. Willing to trust the Lord God. So receive a blessing. And go out into the world with that blessing. Knowing that you did not earn it. It's not because you prayed more or you did so many good things or you cared for more sick or fed more hungry people. But you're willing. Willing to receive God's blessing and then take that blessing out into the world with you. Like those guys who back in 95 got to live a dream. Not because they earned it, but they were willing to step up. Each of us receives God's blessing. Not because we've earned it. Not because we've done anything to deserve it. But because God gives it to us freely. And then sends us out into the world to bring God's love and blessing with us. Amen. Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Holy, holy, holy God, in calling forth creation from the void, revealing yourself in human flesh, and pouring forth your wisdom to guide us, you manifest your concern for our, your whole universe. You invite us as your people to gather the world's needs into our hearts and bring them before you. Faithful God, increase our trust in your promises and move your church towards acts of love and faith. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Bless your church, O God, that our leaders may dream dreams of your glory and vision for the world and lead us to work diligently for your coming kingdom. 
Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Bless the earth and seas, O God, that your sustaining power be at work through us to restore creation where it is broken and protect it where it is whole. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Bless the nations of the world, O God, that your peace and justice may prevail over us all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Bless our communities, O God, that reconciliation be our goal and love our guide in all that we say and do. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Bless all who suffer, O God, especially those we hold near and dear to us in our hearts. They may know healing and recover, and all, and that all who comfort them work as instruments of your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bless the saints, O God, that through them we might see a glimpse of your glory and majesty. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy, holy God, fill us with strength and courage, with discernment and compassion, that we may be your instruments of justice and love in this world, that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.
and let us gather to the table of the Lord. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, within us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new test covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we reclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen.
God's promises endure from generation to generation. May the God of Abraham and Sarah, the God who sent Jesus to redeem us, the God whose covenant is eternal, bless you and make you fruitful. Amen. We go in peace and love to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. And just a few announcements to share with you. First, a prayer concern. We keep Anna right in our prayers. Anna, who just celebrated her 100th birthday just a couple of weeks ago, has been under the weather lately. Please keep, your, keep her in your prayers. Also today, this Sunday, we celebrate Harvest Home. We not only give thanks, Lord of the Harvest, who provides the bounty that feeds us, we also give thanks and pray for those who labor in the fields to bring about that harvest. Reminder that next Sunday, October 3rd, we are celebrating our mortgage burning. That's right, we've paid it off. Um, please, uh, if you're planning on attending, uh, notify the church office. Um, so please note that uh, we will be welcoming back as our guest preacher, our pastor emeritus, Pastor Dennis Moore. Um, who not only began the process, but led us through much of the, the, uh, the time. Um, so we welcome him back and look forward to an opportunity to reminisce and share those stories next Sunday. Um, also, if you are available and able to, we could use some volunteers to help with the event. Please contact the church office to let us know about that. 